as little as possible, which all the speakers say, but I'll stick to the time. Um, and uh, Nilot Paul, uh, as I know him from a very long time, has not changed at all because the way he was arranging all you people and letting you sit in a proper fashion is something that uh, I am used to when I used to work with Nilot Paul, but um, I am a little bit hayward. So my uh, talk would be uh, a little bit here and there as the topic of this lecture, which is quite broad um, as uh, you can always uh, use. Some of you may have Googled it. Uh, so as you can see is the, the, you know, the title of the paper, which is or the title of this discussion, which is culture through the lens of cinema is so huge. Uh, and uh, the definition of culture is so huge that uh, uh, what we can do actually is to give you certain um, thoughts and ideas which you might work on later on in your life. So that is what my intention is to do. Now, uh, what we would organize uh, this particular session in uh, two parts. That is what I uh, thought of because um, Nilat Paul uh, has asked me to also prepare a PPT. Um, uh, I don't really know whether um, uh, there is any point uh, in preparing a PPT, but yes, that is done and it is also called PowerPoint. So uh, again, I'm not very sure about how much power those points have or um, whether they are powerful enough, uh, but we would see to it. What we'll do is, is I'll uh, ask you people to, uh, this is not a management kind of a drill, but I'll ask you people or request you people to do one thing, uh, take five minutes and when I call or when I say Indian culture, uh, what is the first thing that comes to your mind and what is the first image that comes to your mind? Please remember that so that we can start the discussion from there or we can start the discussion after I finish showing you the PPT. So that is how we would, uh, you know, do this session. That is what I think would be uh, beneficial for all of you. Uh, so let me just go and uh, present the PPT first. Uh, Nilatpal, I'm going for the presentation, I think. Yeah, can... Can you see my screen? Yes. yes. Wonderful. So, this is the presentation that I prepared for you. Now, um, when we talk about culture, there are several definitions that you can find in the internet. And we, I have taken a few from some of the famous people whom uh, we know to be uh, theoreticians and thinkers of culture and cultural studies. Uh, so let us go to the first one. Now, what I wanted to say is that when we talk about culture, we talk about it in several terms. So um, you really do not know culture because you are in it. I mean, that is uh, the question that we should deal with later on. So I'll just give you a heads on about what we are going to talk about. Um, now, this is uh, narcissism at best because I put a picture of myself looking at the camera. It might seem serious, but all I was doing it is I was picking up photographs that can be posted in my Facebook. Now, if you look at culture, you can see that 
there is something in culture which is ordinary. I mean, that is another thing that we would probably talk about in terms of cinema and culture later on in my uh, lecture. So what we are trying to do here is to understand culture uh, from certain perspectives which are not really something that comes to mind when we first talk about uh, culture or Indian culture or for that matter any kind of culture in mundane terms or in uh, normal terms but again uh, in normal or mundane terms what is most important according to Raymond Williams and Raymond Williams as you know is one of the major thinkers of culture is what he says is you have to look for culture in the ordinary, in the quotidian, in the mundane. Now, this is a picture that, uh, again, I picked up from Facebook uh, without any permission of your teacher. And uh, I have put a quote of his favorite uh, person along with his picture. And there, I don't really know what kind of interpretative struggle that he was going through. You would be able to tell prob probably, but what I can see is he is waving his hands for some reason or the other. And that is uh, how I interpret it. So that is something that, again, we could talk about later on in our discussion. Now, this is a picture of Katia Bresson. And this is a photograph that was taken by Bresson. Uh, on the funeral of Mahatma Gandhi. And um, we have Gandhi talking about the nation's culture in these terms. Now, if we go back to the two other pictures, obviously these pictures are taken um, recently, but I have, with a little bit of tweak, tried to put them in the same you know, tint as Bresso's picture, which was taken almost 70, 80 years back. Uh, because I can do it in today's time and probably half an hour in Photoshop will make them look exactly like Bresso's picture taken somewhere in the 1900s. So let us go to the last picture. This is a famous uh, exhibition by Duchamp where he put a fountain somewhere when, where you know, people get these things in their washrooms on uh, an exhibition in a particular museum. And that changed the idea of art and what is art. Uh, forever. So let me therefore begin uh, with another cinema person here, Jolu Godar, whom you might have heard about. And that is what he said. Culture is the rule and art is the exception. So finally, uh, what I will be talking about in this entire discussion is two things. One, that culture, for that matter, is not something which is universal, which is one, which has got only one definition. There are cultures, not culture. And second, when we talk about it in terms of cinema, then you have to keep this in mind that cinema is, as a medium is some kind of construction. It's always a construction. It's always a representation. And that is also true for culture. Therefore, when we talk about culture in terms of cinema or in terms of anything which goes through the lens of a medium, then we have to deal with first who is representing what is being represented at and through what medium and those are the questions that are more important to talk about than what is the definition or what is culture so that is 
uh, some sort of a trailer to our discussion. Now, let us come back to my face. Right. So, have you thought of uh, what comes to your mind exactly when I call Indian culture? And uh, since Nilotpal loves um, random sampling, I would ask Nilotpal to pick and choose one or two of your students to tell me about it. Anyone? So I think culture is minding. Sorry, can, can, you, can you repeat it once more? Uh, culture is minding, so it's the one thing which binds the entire country together. We live in an extremely diverse country and we need something to unify. No, I, I, sorry, sorry to interrupt you. I do not want you to uh, speak very seriously about culture. I just want to know one image and one idea when I call Indian culture. Okay, uh, frankly speaking, um, what comes to my mind is something straight out of the 1970s Indian film, which is okay. their figure, and there's a lot of parts in its village. That's what comes to my mind. Wonderful. Well, you know, uh, uh, sorry, before I go to the next person, uh, you know, it's it's okay if you, if you say that I am not sure. I am confused. I don't know. Well, this is what I think. Because only an ignorant person knows everything. So please come up with whatever um, uh, impulses that comes to your mind when we talk about Indian culture. So we have heard one. Let us let us talk about. Uh, let us hear some others. Yes. So, 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 Yes, wonderful. You know, now we are cooking. I mean, there are images coming. You know, I, I come from uh, from a discipline which deals with moving images and images and colors and therefore the first thing that I noticed uh, in your classroom is some lights are flickering, some lights are not, um, uh, you know, going by the same frame rate as your video, etc. So please give me some more images. So we get that beautiful image of, of Rajasthan and the flowing dress and Holi and that sort of a thing comes to my mind. Anything else? Uh, sir, if I take the modern culture of cinema in India, I think mm -hmm. it's a big and they are trying to adapt the Hollywood world. Mm -hmm. In terms of cinema, like if I take your background work as a technical aspect, technical aspect, we are getting just copying the world. Mm -hmm. But I guess we are lacking behind the storyline. Mm -hmm. One more. Uh, um, give me. Uh, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, I am uh, hearing your voices in a bit, a bit of a crackled way. So can you? Speak a little bit slowly because I I don't get I am not getting most of your words. Yes, yes. Yeah, someone is has raised his hand way up in long shot. Yes. Shout. So it's like part of culture. According to me, it is when I come from this angle. So it is like just a red and white size. All right. Just 
Wonderful. So, um, what, what we heard from all of you is uh, the kind of images that comes to your mind are more images or ideas or things or your, um, you know, the, the kind of um, things or the kind of ideas that I can find from most of you is um, about things that are not something that is part of you uh, every day. Now, let us, let us, and that is, that is absolutely fine because something which is part of your every day, something which is part of uh, things that are happening in front of you are not something that you recognize very uh, easily because you have to have something out of the ordinary in order to be recognized. Now, that is the first problem with understanding culture is in order to understand culture, in order to define culture, you need to make it look extraordinary. You need to make it look something that you would only do when it is, you know, in special occasions. For example, if you uh, take photographs of yourself right now, the first thing that you would want to do is to make yourself look the best in front of the photograph. Now, why are you trying to do that? Because most of you are trying to portray an ideal image of yourself in front of the camera. So when we define culture in terms of travel and tourism, or when we define culture in terms of strict definitions, then what we are trying to do is trying to produce an ideal image of a particular event or phenomena or idea. Now, that is where the problem lies in understanding culture. The first of all, when we talked about the, your different opinions and ideas about culture, we can at least, uh, you know, we can at least uh, agree to this thing is most of us have different ideas of culture or different images of culture or we have several different understanding of what we consider to be part of culture or Indian culture or cultural or those sorts of things. And that is something that we have to keep in mind that when we talk about culture in terms of strict definitions or in terms of strict descriptions, then we are making several problems in the way but at the same time it is necessary because that is why i gave you the picture of matrix it is important because you need to make meaning about culture in some way or the other as it is the case in every walks of your life you have to make sense of your lectures in this particular course and probably what i am talking right now because those senses would make you pass your exams. So there are certain uh, necessities for you to produce meanings on certain elements so that you get a very, uh, what we call in cinema, a very enframed look of culture. But at the same time, you can also understand that the moment you frame your idea of culture, you are leaving a lot of things outside and that may create problems. And that is why the moment you are putting a fixed meaning into something in uh, uh, something called culture, that very moment, the idea of culture slips away. Now, this is a little bit of a dicey topic but we will talk about it a bit later on when we talk about cinema because when we talk about cinema or when we talk about the medium of cinema the first thing that we should understand is the lens or the camera does not see the way we see the world which means that what we see and what the camera sees are two very different worlds and second when we see through camera, 
then we create a world according to the codes and conducts of the camera. For example, if we put this video in 60 frames per second, then everything would look slow and dreamy and, uh, you know, look like something that is happening in your dreams. Probably in 120 frames, it would look even more dreamier. Or if we put it in 18 frames per second, then it will look like a Charlie Chaplin video or a film. So which means that when we look at something through the lens of camera, we are seeing it through a medium and the medium has its own rules of the game. Therefore, when we represent something through cinema, that is, say, for example, culture, then we are representing it with three elements in mind. First, who is representing it? Second, how is the medium of cinema changing it? And third, where is it being shown? Therefore, when we look at cinema or when we look at culture through the lens of cinema, we would find that there are certain elements of cinema that dictates how you watch culture. And second, there are certain elements of the person who is making it for you, which dictates what comes outside. And the most beautiful part of it is the way you receive it will depend upon your own idea that you superimpose on what you see. So therefore, when we see something as, because we live in a world which is uh, very much a world that is defined by images and sounds and photographs, and it is even more today because it has become almost impossible to think of something without the image, without the without a video for that matter. Because the kind of uh, the frequency with which you make reels every day tells us that we have, we are living in a world of moving images. So it is very important to understand that how those moving images create a sense of culture. Now, let us go back, if you remember uh, a little bit of the, uh, of the power points that I have put across, you will see that the first thing that we have to keep in mind is when we talk about um, any kind of culture, it comes out from the reality in which we live in, which means we are constructing reality in a certain way in order to put forward some sense of culture. So therefore, let us talk about some iconic images of, say, Hindi cinema or Indian cinema for that matter. And you will find that the, the, the real or the ordinary has been composed in certain way so that it creates some sort of an idea of, of this is what is Indian culture for that matter. Like, for example, your famous scene of Shah Rukh Khan uh, dancing in, in, the, uh, in Sarso, the Khet, in DDLJ, for that matter. Or if you look at um, Satyajit Ray's Pothet Panchali, where the train is coming um, um, into, into, the, into the screen, uh, along with two little kids running towards the train. If you look at some of the modern examples, and you will find, uh, you know, the 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 films that are showing the so-called uh, Bengali culture or Punjabi culture in Rocky or Rani. Uh, if you see these things, you will understand uh, that something that has to be created on screen, which is something we call mezzosin, is essential to produce some sort of a construction of a culture. Now, the problem with, or problem, or uh, if, if you can see it in, in a different way, the interesting part of reproducing or constructing an idea of a, cult, of, of a culture is, is very interesting in case of cinema. Because let us take uh, an example of a historical, because that is something that comes to your mind when we talk about um, uh, some sort of a culture. 
say for example if you look at mughli azam or if you look at jodha akbar or if you look at something which comes from some historical time in in indian uh, history then we create that particular uh, say for example a mughal darbar or a coat of say prithviraj chauhan or um, Uh, something uh, from the from the Maurya period, for example, or something from the modern British period, we would find that there are elements in the scene which are there. Now, if you look at the historical records or archival records of these things, you will find that nowhere it is written how Akbar Batsha used to sit in his throne, how what what kinds of uh, foods were being served. what kind of utensils were being uh, was it served at uh, the the dress that he was wearing whether it was made of silk or something else uh, when he used to talk whether he used to sit in a different posture than this or that uh, when they used to sit and talk with each other did they eat these are the things or say for example what kind of curtains were there now um, you will find that none of the standard history books will write about them why simply because those are not important what is important is how many wars they have won how many policies that are being done what kind of uh, political economic and cultural values that are being created but when we recreate that in case of cinema we have to do it because we cannot just put akbar batsha in vacuum we cannot just put a, a green screen at the background and ask him to tell his dialogues and even if when they are telling their dialogues what kind of language are they talking about if they talk in persian for that matter can we understand so in in this case what i'm trying to say is that when in a film something is constructed there are various visual oral elements that we have to imagine and we have to approximate is that this may have happened or this might have been the case or say for example uh, someone is Mia Tansen is singing a uh, bandish for that matter but we do not have someone from that era to tell us that what kind of musical composition was used during the time what kind of instruments were used during the time so we use our own present music directors to compose it for us in a hindustani classical style or in a carnatic style which is prevalent after 19th century so when we see tansen singing what we are hearing is a modern rendition of khayal or bandish which is something that was created in the 19th century and we think that this is how the mughal court would have looked like now it gets more interesting because when we create our own videos or when we talk about it in uh, in 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 the present world we take those images and then we work on them because over time those images became true and so what we find is that when we talk about rajasthan for that matter it has to look a certain way when we talk about our gods and goddesses it has to look a certain way or it doesn't look very godly uh, in in that matter all our gods and goddesses which look very realistic uh, at the moment are the creations of raja ravi varma and before that there was no realistic version of gods and goddesses and um, if we go to our uh, temples we will find that most old temples have their gods and goddesses which are more symbolic rather than having a realistic uh, you know shape to it so what i'm trying to talk about is when we talk about culture in certain terms we have to keep this in mind that 
it has been constructed over years very meticulously with certain elements in mind. Therefore, when we talk about those cultures today, we have to talk about it in terms of how it is being constructed through a certain medium and what are the elements that made it happen. And when we look at them in retrospect, how do we look at them and do we look at them as something which is written on the stone, something which is unfallible, something which cannot be questioned, or we have the fun to dissect it and look at it in different ways and try to find out how it has been produced over years and centuries to come to this very form. Now, in order to do that, how do you do it in case of cinema for that matter? In order to do that, you have to keep this in mind that cultural landscapes that are being produced in cinema comes from two uh, places. One, how the mediums and conventions work and that is and, 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 the, and the limitations of the medium of cinema. And second, you have to look at it from the history of cinema itself. Now, the problem that we do most of the time is when we look at something, we look at it first from outside the medium or outside the conventions, and then we go to the conventions. Most of the time, it should be the other way around, at least in case of cinema or any other medium by which this representation is happening, is you have to look at its internal constitutions first. To end this very short discussions, because we are on 11.34, what I was uh, trying to say is this, that when we, for example, talk about Indian culture in, uh, say, if you are in, say, UK or USA or Australia or any other country where there is a huge section of diaspora, or even in Bangalore, which is quite a cosmopolitan city, when we have to talk about or dress or produce some sort of an idea of Indian culture, we resort back to Bollywood. Now, when we go to Bollywood for that matter, we have to keep this in mind that who are making these films. So in the 90s, which was, you know, the, the uh, mother of all uh, images of Indian culture, at least in the West, they are being produced mostly by North Indian directors and producers and actors. So they do what they know. So they have been producing the idea of villages, the idea of people, the idea of dresses and costumes and the stories and the narratives from the land that they have grown. And then those films go to um, go to um, go across the borders to UK, US, Australia, etc. And there we find a small section by which we define the whole. And that is where we find that, okay, India means that it is some kind of a landscape which is uh, almost identical to something that we see in Punjab and Haryana. Now, as we go down with different kinds of films getting sent across, we are finding different ideas of Indian culture. At present, it has become more of a uh, amalgamation of different stereotypes. Like, for example, uh, when we talk about uh, Bengali and the Bengali culture, he or she must look like a certain way. I mean, they should have a dark glass. They should have. Uh, they should all talk about literature. They all should know how to sing. And they all should talk very intellectually. Now, at least the Bengalis are very bored by that stereotype. I am. So, which means uh, when we talk about these things, 
we have we what we do is we pick out certain ideal understanding of a culture or in, or, or 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 some kind of a livelihood and we pick it up from years of construction that are being happening in cinema for the last at least for the last 50 years and then we take it and we make it our basis for further representation therefore when we come to the final product what we find is a representation of a representation of a representation and somewhere what it originally meant is lost now there is no problem in that but what we have to keep this in mind is one you cannot think of cultures in terms of singularity or something which is universal but something which is plural which is uh, everywhere and which is something that is confusing complex therefore confusing and second when we look at it through cinema you have to understand that cinema or film for that matter anything and everything that is produced through the lenses of cinema is a construction so do not believe it the way you believe your everyday reality question it try to understand it and try to find the methods of construction of that reality that you called culture. So that is where I'll end. Now let us take your questions and let us try to, uh, you know, answer your questions. And from there we can uh, extend these discussions. Now, uh, Nilotpal, can I uh, request you something that do if you have a microphone, if you can give it to your students because the the sound is crackling. Microphone is not okay. Okay. So, so what you can do is uh, because if someone is talking from further behind the class, what is happening is I I cannot get most of the words. So if you can repeat it once more to me so that I can answer, yes, that would be great. Yeah. Yes. Um, so you spoke about stereotypes. Hmm. Um, um, I feel like one of the reasons it's so uh, prevalent in movies and film is the audience. It's because the audience uh, easily recognizes these stereotypes. When a character comes and he book and he's trying to portray it. Uh, having come from a specific district or something, right? Um, often the instructions that are given to us is go with this because it looks like you're from that area. Because I myself have acted with that. So usually they expect us to, like, you know, go with the stereotypes so the audience can recognize it easily. Especially with things like maybe not cinema as such, but like theater when you're further away from the audience. It's easier to uh, represent stereotypes just to convey the effect. Mm -hmm. Rather than to, you know, discriminate or, uh, you know, stereotype and make anyone feel uncomfortable. It's just how the audience is recognized. So, a lot mm -hmm. of filming uh, generally is appealing to the audience, which I feel like if cinema needs to change, the audience also needs to change. Absolutely, absolutely. You're absolutely right. But at the same time, there, there is, you know, you you put put out put up a very important topic because you know that is the problem with cinema. Uh, in in films, uh, unlike literature, uh, you have to show everything, right? So in that case, you cannot you cannot say that. Well, uh, it was a beautiful class where people were all sitting. Some of them are bored to death. Some of them are sleeping, which we cannot see, but because of the fear of Nilotpal, everyone is wide awake. That you can say in literature. But in case of cinema, you have to show it. Now, when you show it, 
then you have to show an establishing scene with 15 people or 30 people sitting there. Then you have to go to a close up to someone who is actually sleeping. And then you have to go up to someone who is actually yawning. And then you have to come back to someone who is the hero of the scene or the heroine of the scene and saying uh, that, no, no, this, this person is absolutely attentive because the, his teacher wants him to be. Now, once you have to show everything, then the, you know, the easiest way to do it is to find elements which are recognizable. And that is why when you show, uh, when we sh when you show someone who is an attentive person, you literally wants to show that person as someone who is very parhaku, which means you have to dress them in a certain way because that is how people recognize it. Now, what happens is every time we remember about a physicist or a philosopher, that person needs to be unhealthy, needs to be uh, someone who has never uh, taken a shower in, in his entire life, someone who is disabled. But why? I mean, can't a philosopher have six packs? And they did have six packs and they were really healthy because uh, we were talking about Aristotle and uh, Plato's and they have fought wars. And so therefore, now that is the problem is when you have to show the easiest way is to show it through stereotypes. Again, that is why you need to see different kind of films and probably when you do it yourself, you have to do it in that way that what is more fun is to show that the one whom you think is something is not exactly the one because that is how our real life works. Our real life, and that is the that is also something when you want to look intellectual because the Facebook tells you or the social media tells you that that is how you need to dress up or that is how you need to talk, that is how you need to present yourself. But you don't want to do that. So who told you to do it in that way? Probably the films. So yes, you are absolutely right. We need uh, more, uh, you know, uh, what we call uh, people. We, we, we need more uh, filmmakers who are more angry about the situations. We need more filmmakers. I don't say they, they want to, they have to be radical, but they have to be uh, someone who can or who, who, who wants to do it. And we also need audiences. We also need uh, viewers who can say that, look, this is absolutely nonsense. This is absolute nonsense. This is not how my uh, uh, you know, friends look. This is not how uh, we look as, as a group in this class. We comes from different regions of India. So why will you, why will we uh, watch it on screen? So when these things happen, as you rightly pointed out, then this will change. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Please. So you talked about how culture and stereotypes is important for how how stereotypes are important for representing culture. Mm -hmm. But don't you think like in current media, every one is taking offense for whatever is. Like if there's a certain street being shown out of a certain uh, culture, people are taking offense with that. So how can we balance that offense and that stereotype where we can establish a scene and also not offend a lot of people? Right. Now, I mean, first of all, I'm, I, I should uh, put my point a little bit more. I am not for stereotypes. But yes, it is a necessary evil. Right. Because in case of cinema for that matter or in case of anything which is what i said in the very beginning in order to make meaning about something you have to stop the flow of meaning at some point of time your life uh, has different meanings depending upon the perspective that you take for that matter this particular class or lecture might be interpreted in hundreds of different ways and none of them are complete, but you have to do it nonetheless. Now, that is the problem of meaning making. That is what happens when we define culture in several ways. If it was so easy to define it in one particular way, if we Google it, we won't have 1000 definition of culture. 
so it is difficult but it is also necessary for certain cases or in order to live our life we cannot leave everything haywire but at the same time we have to acknowledge it that is what i'm saying now what you said is again opens up a very different uh, thing that when we talk about certain culture in terms of stereotypes people do take offense and that is good to a certain extent because they are acknowledging the fact that it is stereotype and at the same time what i think we should do is we should work with the stereotypes and break it from inside now if i give you an exercise say do it in your spare time with your mobile phone create a a uh, stereotype of some someone say a bengali or a punjabi or a tamil and dress him or her exactly how we look at it as a stereotype and let him or her speak and act and do exactly the opposite of the stereotype you will find that that will break it from inside now there are different ways in your own life you are being told from your birth to follow different kinds of rules and again i am not telling you not to but at the same time please do question them please to understand them and try to you know work with them you will find funny ways interesting ways to deal with them and uh, that is what i uh in a hope that you will do with cultural stereotypes uh, and with other things yes so extending beyond stereotypes when it comes to the representation of culture thank god yes carry on the representation of culture in cinema including the norms and history so the extent of uh, creative liberty we give to the directors and filmmakers becomes a really very really important issue and i think it's a very controversial issue in india we saw various protests it has led to communism in india with movies like padma bhan ko in the so how do you feel uh, to what extent should we or should we not allow this creative liberty and freedom of speech and expression to these directors such that they are able to balance between the views they want and the interpretation of history in a uh, direction of information uh, you know they they want to for the public Mm-hmm. I mean, sorry, I I lost a little bit of it. Nilakumar, can you just summarize it once more? Uh, so summarize it once more. Yes. So basically, my question is: To what extent do you feel this creative liberty should be allowed, or should not be allowed to balance between the informational welfare and the views the directors want? Right. Right. Okay. Now this is a age-old question of. of any kind of art form is how much is allowed and how much is not allowed now you know this is again a very um, serious question which involves a lot of different things like for example ethics like for example um, you know how much is uh, good for or uh, not for certain uh, certain mediums and at the same time it also talks about the issue that whether you would need any kind of restriction in any kinds of freedom of of expression so speech now in my terms what i think is it is for an artist say for example a film director it is a strategic decision now the first thing is you have to be honest to what you want to represent now there will always be external pressures or there will always be external restrictions to what can be done or cannot be done however history of cinema or history of art has shown us that there are ways of doing things or expressing yourself in different times and different regimes in different kinds of restrictions like for example i gave you the um example of marshal dushams uh, idea of art what he did was he put a fountain where we you know in where which we used in the urinals in the middle of an exhibition 
and he said that why don't we make why can't we consider is uh, consider it as art why only the images of mona lisa or the sistine chapel are considered to be examples of art and why not this now this particular gesture changes fundamentally the idea of what can be considered an art and what cannot be considered an art and this is something that is again there in our everyday life like uh, if you put if you frame an image of say some uh, you know flyers that is stuck in in some wall in your you know outside your university then most of the people are saying that the, why did you frame it this is not art but if you frame something which is considered to be art then people will say a lot of things good things about it now with changes of time what we find in most houses is what we call the pastiche which means you actually frame elements you actually uh, write things in your t-shirts you frame things which are considered to be vulgar which are considered to be ordinary and that is the reason why my first slide i put the wall of you know the pan stained wall and that is also part of indian culture believe it or not so when we talk about indian culture the pan stained the gutka stained walls are also part of indian culture now if you frame it today you frame it simply because dushamp did it a while back so someone has to do take a strategic decision somewhere in order to bypass in order to challenge not by um, you don't need to challenge it always by uh, you know saying it on your face that is required but also there are certain times when you have to take strategic decisions if you are very good at what you are doing by which you can reach people more fundamentally and that will pick on with times so nowadays when you use different elements from when you, you when you put your uh, when you decorate if you look at your uh, own student rooms or your own rooms in your house the way you decorate it is something that you would never have done if we were born and were you know uh, studying in the 1950s and 1960s it would have been completely different you would have never put a few inverted uh, you know glass uh, in your house with uh, with little bulbs into it because those are the things that people used to do in little dhabas now that became part of your decor people are selling them uh, online now those things happen because dusham said that art cannot be only mona lisa so that is what i am trying to say that when you have to when an artist wants to deal with a situation where there are ethical issues where there are issues of censorship they have to find a strategic way of doing it and that is what we have seen in iranian cinema for that matter we have seen uh, filmmakers like yorostami filmmakers like makbal baf came up with ideas by which they could fight state censorship like for example if you have seen in iranian cinema you will find that the uh, most of the films have child as their central character now why child and why those films are being put not in tehran but in kurdistan or at those spaces which tehran does not consider to be the center of iran some places which are outside the purview of the idea of iran simply to put this thing across that iran or the national character of iran could not be defined by what tehran decides and in order to do that if you put a child as your central protagonist then you can tell the stories tell those complex political problems those ethical problems through the narrative of innocence now that is the strategic strategic decisions that the iranian filmmakers are taking in order to you know avoid censorship so i think 
an artist should be more cleverer in times of censorship in times of uh, you know different kinds of um, sanctions and we have produced the greatest art in term in in the times of crisis so i think crisis is good for art thanks a lot azir da yes uh, so brilliant session uh, so that, that is that is for your students to say though so i would hope that most of you have got some some idea of what i'm trying to say because well i am not as organized as nirupal anyway yes sorry let's carry on we are signing off for this session okay okay thank you so much talking to you bye okay i'm signing off then bye take care